Welcome back to Battletech Talks with me, Magical Hack. We are going to continue our stroll down the Battletech timeline with the 22nd century. Early on in the 22nd century, uh, 2102, the Kearney Fuchida Drive has proven feasible. So those are the two scientists that help with fusion, uh, fusion reactor technology. Uh, early in the 21st century, they also were the ones that realized that with the right amount of power, you could send matter faster than light. Um, once this is done in 2102, the very next year, the uh, Heron Alliance decides to start with the Demos Project. Now, what the Demos Project was, was... A, uh, a project to build a faster-than-light drive uh, using the uh, Kearney Fujita drive as basically making that a reality. Um, a couple of years later, uh, some of the poorer nations within the Alliance are not really all that happy about uh, the Demos project, uh, mainly because they're not getting fairly taxed. So they do what uh, any, uh, you know, what, what, what any uh, oppressed people do. They start rioting. Um, so riots break out in South Pearl and South America. However, that doesn't do anything to dissuade the Terran Alliance. Uh, and as of 2107, the first prototype jump, sh jump ship makes its first hyperspace jump. Um, so it basically jumped from just above the sun to just below the sun. And it's at that point that uh, scientists and, and engineers and people who worked on the project were saying that uh, both Kearney and Fuchida should have lived to see this day. Um, the very next year, uh, Raymond Bach, I'm probably not pronouncing that name right, became the first human to successfully complete a hyper jump. Or, yeah, a, hyper, a hyper jump. Wow, I can talk. I can do the words thing. Um, it's at this point, uh, the TAS Pathfinder is sent to basically uh, do the first round trip to the Tau SETI system. <clears throat> um, interesting to note, uh, the first human to walk on the sur surface of a planet outside of the Terran solar system was on December 15th, 2108, when Michelle Land uh, stepped onto the surface of Tau Ceti. Uh, Canadian engineer, by the way. Um, and this also marks the beginning of the first exodus, where everybody's trying to basically get the hell off Earth. Or, sorry, Terra. Um... Two years later, in 2110, the first interstellar outpost on New Earth is founded. Uh, the basic manipulator is introduced. Uh, now, the basic manipulator is essentially the hands that you see on battle armor. Pretty much. Um... And the drop shuttle bay is invented to allow large spacecraft to dock with jump ships. Um, now, you're, uh, in 2112, uh, there's a research outpost established on New Earth. And about four years later, the first permanent interstellar colony is established on new earth and uh the pass arc is launched pardon me 
Um, so again, more people leaving Earth and stuff like that. Um, now, within four years of that happening, in 2120, the Terran Space Navy is created. Um, within a few years, jump ship te technology becomes actually feasible for corporate use. Um, so that's 2123. Uh, in 2128, we see the first colonist ship lost. First official colonist ship lost. Um, and that's the Liberator. Uh, now, we we also see, shortly after that happening, a uh, colonization procedure referendum passed, which basically said that all colonist ships need to have a military escort. Um, and at the same time, the Terran Alliance forms the 11th Terran Rangers, which will later become the 2nd Donegal Guards. Itchy knows. Okay. So we we're seeing a lot more uh, colonization happening. With uh, in twenty one thirty four, we see the Terran Alliance colonizing the Procyon system. Uh, a few years later, the planet the planet Merrick is settled. And in twenty one forty one, Elias Young Lao. Or Liao, the the founder of House Liao, is born on Terra in the Hong Kong Free State. We have in the in the following years from that, we have more planets being settled, um, and more colonies being created. Then in twenty one sixty eight, the first Alliance Grand Survey is uh, started. Um, now that is going to end, uh, six years later, finding that, uh, at the time of its ending, there were 112 colonized worlds spread over an 80 light year diameter, uh, 40 light year radius. Um, shortly after that, the Sarna Supremacy is formed. And again, we, we see a lot of populating of the, uh, of various planets, things like that. Now, uh, in 2179, Elias Liao, who at this point is president of the Hong Kong Free State, has to flee. Um, as the China Republic decided they didn't want any more of the Hong Kong Free State bullshit and invaded. A um, few years after that, seeing that uh, Elias Liao had fled, um, the uh, China Republic starts the Elias Liao cleansing actions. Um, then after six years, uh, and the death of, uh, Cynthia Le Liao and her two children, Elias Liao flees Terra with his two sons after his Himalayan stronghold is assaulted by the Chinese Republic. Um... A few years after that, we see the Capellan Holdfast uh, created on Capella. And the very next year, it's replaced by the Capellan Republic. Um, 2095, we see the Second Alliance Grand Survey. Um, which... Then, at that point, cataloged 395 colonized worlds spread over a 90-year radius. 
180 light years across. A big fucking distance. Um, now, in 2196, uh, Terrence Alliance, or sorry, Terran Alliance forces have to intervene militarily on New Olympia because, you know, there's, cl there, there, there's clashes over resources. What else is war fought over? Um, and in 2197, St. Ives is settled by refugees fleeing the Republic of China occupation of the Hong Kong Free State. Um, that basically is going to take us to the end of the 22nd century. Now on to the 23rd century. In 2200, the terraforming of Sirius begins. Um, two years later in 2202, Elias Liao, the founder of House Liao, dies. Victor Liao is named the governor of Liao. Um, 2205, the, the Terran Alliance ship, the KS Camelot, discovers New Avalon. Um, And we're, we're, and then in the next few years, we see a lot of births and deaths of uh, individual, uh, basically, uh, ancestors to the current uh, noble houses. Uh, 2210, Heft is discovered by the Ozawan merchant clan. Uh, a few years later, New Avalon is settled. And we see a lot more, you know, trying to expand the Terran Alliance reach um, by, t you know, sending scouts out in 2015 to the Euclid system to ascertain the feasibility of colonization. Um, 2219 and the time of the Third Alliance Grand Survey, uh, we're looking at 461 colonized worlds in a 100 light year radius with Terra at the center. And so at this point, the, the, the Terrence Alliance or the Terran Alliance is becoming kind of fat and unwieldy. Uh, they have to intervene a second time on New Olympia because the, the people there can't stop fighting with one another over the planet's resources. Um, so we see the planet Rio joining, uh, in, you know, one way or another, either being conquered or choosing to, uh, the, the Tikhonov Union. Um, the, uh, the, the Corvin Doctrine is established in 2225. Um, now that's essentially one of the core principles taught to all uh, Capellan Confederation citizens. And it basically espouses the philosophy that to disobey the will of the state is to threaten the ultimate future of the human race. Um, yeah. Not not a very fun group, guys. Not gonna lie. Um, and the Terrence Alliance, the Ter sorry, Terrence, the Terran Alliance world of Tybalt votes to join the Tikhonov Union after being occupied by the Union groups. Um, so. Around twenty two thirty four, we start to see more more systems, more colonies ha taking issue with Terra. Uh, Denebola in 2234 declares independence. Uh, the next year, we have uh, the Fourth Alliance Grand Survey. Um, that's in 2235. And at that point, there were 619 colonized worlds 
in a 128 light year uh, radius. Um, again, a lot of colonies, a lot of worlds. And we're, we're seeing more, like basically it's at this point that everything starts to go downhill. Uh, in 2236, freedom declares itself independence and the outer reaches rebellions start. Then in 2237, we see the grain rebellion. Um, and this is, uh, an action taken by the colonists of new Avalon against unreasonable Terran Alliance grain quotas. <clears throat> uh, it's essentially the expansionist party that was in power up to this point and ends up dissolving. Um, and the liberal, the liberal party takes over on Terra. Unfortunately, they were kind of a different sort of terrible, um, as the Battletech universe and, uh, setting proves time and again, human beings are fucking terrible. It's, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the setting. Um, so now at this point, uh, the word starts to, uh, essentially go through the military and the Alliance fleet withdraws from a lot of the colony worlds. Uh, the Republic of America ends up forming and they declare independence. Uh, the, the, you know, New Avalon declares their independence uh, you see a lot, like I said, a lot of different systems and colonies saying, you know what, go fuck yourself, Terra. Um, within a few years of this, like, in 2242, the Terran, the Terran Alliance releases the Demarcation Declaration, which basically just says that anything... Any worlds beyond a 30 light year sphere around Terra, you're on your fucking own. You, you get to be independent, you get to fend for yourselves. Um, because they realized that they couldn't govern all of that. There's just no way. Um, that also marks the end of the first Exodus and the beginning of the second Exodus. Um... Now, again, over the next few years, we see a lot of the, you know, we see a lot of different uh, colonies and, and, and essentially countries, in, like space countries, um, developing and growing, um, taking on new planets either by conquering them or just, you know, settling them. Uh, in 2245, the Republic of Merrick decides that they want in on this war shit and begins a campaign of conquest against nearby worlds. Um, the next year, they conquer uh, Atreus and form the Merrick Commonwealth. Um, again, we see a lot of uh, a lot of politicking, a lot of wars and war crimes happening over the next few years. Um, so uh, we're going to jump ahead to 2270 when the Capellan hege Hegemony is founded. Um, Piero Curita is born, uh, Lucian Davian is born, and Terence Merrick is born. Um, now 2288, we see a combined force from the Capellan hegemony and the Sian supremacy, uh, liberate, uh, High Spire from an occupying pirate force. And in 2289, uh, the Eiffel Tower is actually dismantled and taken to Japan on Terra, aboard uh, two two different cargo subs.
Um, so within, you know, within about seven years of that, uh, there's again, a lot more, uh, conquering of planets, things like that. People being shitty people. Um, James McKenna ends up taking control command of the Alliance Global Navy. Um, we also see prototypes of the LRM first appear as well. Um, now, we also see the first true combat warship, the Dreadnought, launched. Um, and the LRM and AC-2 at this point, uh, and this is 2300, basically right at the end of the 23rd century. Um, we see the LRM and the AC-2 put into production. Alrighty, I think I'm going to stop it here for today, uh, folks. I definitely want to thank you all for uh, taking the time to watch today. If you happen to like what you have uh, heard today, don't hesitate. Drop, uh, drop a follow. Dr like, subscribe. I'm too used to doing the whole Twitch sign out. It's, uh, it's a thing. If you happen to want to hang out with me live, you can catch me over on Twitch at Magical Hack. Um, Twitch.tv slash Magical Hack, obviously. Uh, I'm also on the Hell site formerly known as Twitter, under at Magical Hack. You can find me as Magical Hack on Blue Sky. And I'm, you know, touring about and doing my thing on here as well on the YouTube, so you can also find me here. Um, I want to thank you all once again for uh, taking the time to watch today, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs>